What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, May 14th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, USA EIA lowers Brent oil forecast. Interesting. Next up, EU unleashes sweeping sanctions against Moscow and Minsk. Next up, addressing Texas nuclear reliability. Is it time to go nuclear? And finally, oh, in the new segment, Chinese <laughs> firms to develop oil and gas fields in Iraq. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. And in a, in a shocking news, U.S. shale companies accused of collusion over oil price. I will cover all that in a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies there with the EIA. They uh, they lowered their Brent oil price forecast, Michael. And uh, I found this is because it's their STO, short-term uh, energy outlook, is what they normally produce it out in, is, quote, uh, however, a daily crude spot oil prices have since fallen in the Brent spot price at 84 barrels per day, May 2nd, said in the STEO. Uh, uh, geopolitical tensions are also supported by crude oil prices amid uh, conflict between Iran and Israel. Michael, where do you think oil prices are going? Well, I mean, if I knew that, Stu, we'd be, we'd be, I, I wouldn't be sharing that here and we'd be placing a lot more bets on the market. So the reality answer is I don't know. It's clear there's a floor between, as I mentioned on yesterday's show, 70 to 75 and 85 to 90. There's that bandwidth, that oil trade. The U.S. economy can't support oil over $90, at least in the WTI standpoint. Right. From a Brent standpoint, that would be oil over 100 As much as we all love in the oil and gas business to talk about $100 oil, the United States economy couldn't support that. And mm -hmm. it would be actually devastating to lower income uh Families and overall inflation would be go rampant because a lot of the inputs that go into the inflation calculation are backed up by energy. So with that, I don't believe we're going to see oil, you know, much higher than 8590. If I had to guess, we're going to continue to trend downward um, between that 75 and 85 dollar bandwidth. We've seen oil prices um, slightly up today, hovering around that 80 dollar mark. I think, you know, the the the. What they mentioned specifically in this report, talking about how geopolitical tensions have sort of amped yeah. up relative to where, I mean, that if 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 the basis for oil prices being eighty five to ninety dollars specifically here at home have to do with geopolitical tensions, we're not always going to have geopolitical tensions, and if we do, that's not good. The fact, and if and if you're if you're if you're sitting there praying for war so that oil prices are higher, well, um, yep. Lindsey Graham's got a seat at the dinner table. You can go hang out with him later. We've no, um, it, and he's a loser. Did it, whoa, did I just say that? I oh, he's listening in on this conversation. News. He's flash. always welcome on the podcast because I have a few questions for him. Um, the, the one thing though, Michael, is we sit here and we take a look at the long term. If president Trump is elected and our, uh, one of our good buddies, uh, over there at the Th crude truth, Pecos operating and, and, uh, Trevino family resources, it, he has said, if Republican gets in, doesn't have to be Trump. If a Republican gets in oil prices go down. So. If everybody wants lower prices at the pump, go vote for a Republican. Yeah, I think you that's a, a, a really good call out on the fact of, you know, this upcoming election is going to be interesting. Now, the Biden administration is going to do whatever they can to support lower oil prices, whether that's letting out of but the SPR. It's temporary and it does not work. Well, of there, course, we know it. We, of course, you asked me where I think oil prices are going. So I'm giving you a reasoning on where I think they might go. I think if you're talking about a bandwidth of 75 to 85 or 70 to 90, let's just expand it to 70 and 90 outside of, you know, a tactical nuclear weapon being launched in the Middle East you know, or some crazy supply or, you know, bird flu all of a sudden. I heard that's going crazy now. We might all of a sudden have bird stew shaking his head for our podcast listeners. But if bird flu becomes the next 
crazy event, well, then we might see prices die below. But if I had to bet if $80 plus or minus is the the sort of the, the line, if you're a gambler, I'm going to take the under if only because I feel like as we move into the election season, it's going to be pertinent for the current administration to make sure prices are, are slow enough. And, you know, quite frankly, as somebody who drives, I don't mind lower gas prices. I don't either. And, and quite honestly, uh, I'm going to say this out loud. Uh, I think the EIA, <laughs> yeah, we don't want HR uh, jumping in on it. Uh, let's all let's hold this thought. Um, I, I personally think that the EIA will fudge the numbers in order to get the numbers down uh, for the Biden administration, because the job numbers have done they have done that on the job number. We know they've done it as well. So I think you're going to see the low end of this. And it's because by hook or by crook, it's going to be the low end. Wouldn't Let's have guessed. Stu with a conspiracy theory wouldn't have wouldn't have see, didn't see that one coming. It, Michael, you know what the difference between a conspiracy theory and a fact is? Two weeks, uh, less than one week now because of <laughs> <laughs> we're down to one week. Down uh, to one week, great. All right, what's next? Let's go to the EU unleashes sweeping sanctions against Moscow and Minsk. I'll tell you, this just absolutely drives me uh, nuts. The EU proposes measures including restrictions on Russian LNG transshipment, ban on investing in key LNG projects, and expanded liability for sanctions and even more. And Michael, are you ready for this one? Germany just got caught with a Scooby moment. They went, we can't invest in Russian in the article, it goes down in here, and Germany got caught investing in in Russian LNG. Go figure this out. You can't make this kind of a story up. No, I mean, the, the interesting part is that, you know, we, we've mentioned this multiple times in the podcast. Many years ago, Donald Trump came out and said, yo... EU, what are you doing investing in and, and relying so heavily on the Russian energy flows? If things ever go sideways, you're going to be in trouble. And, you know, Germany's just, try, you know, according to this article, it's trying to have its cake and eat it, too. The EU's got to come in and whoop, put a stop to that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and so yeah, I just got really to you. There's some serious uh, things in this article that I, I really had to give them a shout out. Uh, the military, uh, between the two, it goes into a bunch of, uh, different stuff. So it's a good article. Let's head on to the next one here though, Michael, as a summary going into addressing Texas grid reliability, time to go nuclear. I always think it's time to go nuclear. Uh, I, I think that this is an outstanding article. And, uh, if we take a look at the, um, mix between solar wind nuclear and natural gas and michael look at chart number one share of the renewable in in texas triples from 2010 to 2023 solar is a little tiny pimple wind is uh it's like an, an overbite and then you have nuclear and it is rock solid you have coal and natural gas. If you extended out nuclear, you wouldn't have any grid problems. Yeah, I mean, you know, we sound like a broken record. Nuclear is one of the few things that can replace coal and natural gas as a baseload energy. So the fact that ERCOT is, you know, putting out this, this message of the fact that, hey, we need to do more investment into thermal energy sources, it doesn't necessarily surprise me. I mean, you know, they they specifically said ERCOT officials warned that they might need to resort to rolling blackouts to keep the system from breaking. I mean, we, we, we praise ERCOT for low prices, but then we also hit ERCOT from the fact of, hey, we might need to have rolling blackouts to prevent the system from breaking. So ERCOT isn't all good in the fact that there is there is some need for a over, you know, a regulatory body that, you know, some sort of regulation into the energy grid is necessarily clear, especially with the growing number of data centers specifically around the DFW area. Oh, absolutely. And and then if you want data, you got to love nuclear. So if you want AI, you got to have nukes. 
So scary. Uh, you got to love some nukes. Hey, let's go to this next one. Chinese firms to develop oil and gas fields in Iraq. Um, Michael, most people don't think of China as a gigantic EMP company. Geojade Petroleum, a Chinese oil exploration production company, won a bid to develop Iraq's uh, Zaibaitha field in uh, Weist Governate in eastern Iraq. Here's part of the big thing, Michael. Chain, that company is one of the main companies in uh, the Panama and the rainforest. And so when you sit back and take a look at the rainforest in South, uh, South America, um, China is responsible for tearing apart a significant chunk of the rainforest and selling that to California. Here they are again, and guess who's going to be buying this Chinese oil from Iraq? <laughs> if you didn't know who was selling to California, everybody would have missed that little tidbit in this article. Yep. So uh, another win for Newsom over there in California. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can keep that at ESG. But, uh, you know, China makes, as part of their Belt and Road Initiative, they, they've been doing this for, for over 15 years now, scooping up and striking deals with international companies to go ahead and lock up. Um, oh, yeah. Lock up specific uh, uh you know, minerals it, it, all across the mineral value chain, whether it's, you know, critical minerals or whether it's oil and gas assets. So I'm not surprised that they gone in there. You know, it's a lucrative field. You know, this is, you know, as this article says, this is yep. a billion dollar, a couple billion dollars worth of uh, uh, profits sitting out here. Oh, absolutely. And in, in fact, uh, all it does is add more to the uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Yeah. Right? Off to you, dude. All right, well, we'll go ahead and uh, and pop over and do a little finance. But before we do that, guys, we'll go ahead and pay the bills around here. As always, thanks for checking us out on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy and oil and gas news. We appreciate everybody um, who has checked out our website. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business hit the description below for all the links to the articles timestamps um and you can also check us out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com and we're also excited to announce um our uh our news is being exclusively fed into um we've struck a new partnership with the digital wildcatters over there nice. their, collide G their collide gpt uh it's out uh it was out two three days ago you can go ahead and check that out you can see all of our rss feed rolling in there it's pretty cool to see you log into the app and boom energy news beats right there so uh that's oh, very how awesome cool is that it's very what? cool i highly recommend everybody checking out um collide gpt and their whole kind of collide app specifically over there at digital wildcatters you can get uh you know you're never far away from energy news beat trust me um, so with that, let's get, let, we're, we're only two, we're always, we're always circling, baby. Um, let's go ahead and move over um, just in, 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 and cover what happened in the, in, in the markets today. We did see the S&P 500, they fairly flat. It was down about a 0.02 percentage point. NASDAQ up about a quarter of a percentage point, two year yields, 10 year yields, basically flat. We did see the dollar index down about a 10th of a percentage point. Uh, we did see Bitcoin up about two percentage points, $62,000 crude oil up about 1.1 percentage points. 79.12 Brent oil only up a half a percentage point 83.78 natural gas up five percentage points two dollars and 38 cents you know back to crude oil part of the reason why we we saw prices move up mainly is on demand optimism um you know it's china came out with some interesting data that is that is really kind of buoyed prices from the fact that um um, consumer price indexes have moved positively in that realm, which 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 hopefully um, begins to move some stuff. They've also um, announced that they're going to do about uh, 138 billion economic stimulus. It's about a trillion won, but um, so I mean, anytime there is some you know investment of that standpoint, you are going to see an expansion of demand. Considering China is one of the big buyers of American crude, specifically for our light sweet um, crude, it could be very interesting. Um, 
specifically um um to see what happens off the back of what Stu talked about this I this Iraq oil deal but that that's a little bit farther off market so it'll be very interesting to see um what happens you know I, I just got one story Stu it's US shale companies accused of collusion over oil price and normally I don't make a big deal about this but this is you know that's, the oil and gas industry is getting, yeah the oil and gas industry is getting pounded from all sense fresh off of the FTC blocking Scott Sheffield from joining the Exxon Mobil board from the Exxon pioneer um merger um a new barrage of lawsuits alleging that some of the largest companies in the sector and i'm reading now straight from the article uh alleging some of the largest companies in the sector colluded to curb and output and raise prices after similar claims were made by u.s antitrust regulators okay this is absolutely hilarious Stu. okay talk about having your cake and eating it too the lawsuit takes aim at the industry's model of Capital discipline in which producers have pivoted from rapidly building up production in response to high prices in re recent years in favor of funneling cash back to investors. Let me get this straight. Let me just get this straight. So when we were pumping up production as fast as possible, people were jumping down the U.S. industry's throats because they were responsible for climate change. And now, as they've pulled back on production, shift their focus into one, shareholder returns, but also everyone's out there talking about, you know, net zero 2050, net zero 2040, all that jazz. Now, all of a sudden, they're in trouble because they haven't rapidly increased production. It's absolutely unbelievable, Stu. They're attempting to have their cake and eat it, too. Plaintiffs in New Mexico allege the group's collective failure to open the taps as crude prices soared in wake of the Russian invasion of Ukraine was a departure from the historical practice and rational, independent self-interest. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second, guys. The goal of a business is to make money. Why were invest? Why was? Why were oil companies drilling like crazy and raising production? Uh, uh, a a a any ideas? And this is a rhetorical question because we know what the answer is. Because that's what investors wanted, and investors were pouring money to make that happen. Oh, oh, well, when the investors oh. shifted. And saying, well, we actually realized that all of this production that you made didn't actually benefit the shareholders, which a business, well, their explicit goal is to make money for its investors. Me, hold, me, on, Stu, hold on, Stu. Hold on, Stu. Let me finish this. Um, hey. Now, all of a sudden, when they shift, when, in, when, when they continue to follow what investors say, but investors have changed their mind and say, we actually want a little bit of ESG. We want a little bit of uh, 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 stock buybacks. It's now the oil company's fault because they're in cahoots with OPEC? I don't understand. No. Now, let me ask something. Isn't there this thing called ESG, environmental, social, and governance? And governance is about being uh, responsible to your stakeholders? You mean the oil and gas companies were actually following the credence of ESG? I mean, one of the companies named in this lawsuit is Chesapeake Energy. But I don't have to remind you the fact that they went bankrupt. <laughs> so, I mean, what, what, what do they want? What is this? What's this guy's name? Thomas Bird, <laughs> a partner at Wolf Halvenstein. What a name, okay? Quote, not the first time... People in the oil and gas business make, made, a, made a mess that will take a lot to clean up. Damages are significant. Yeah, to shareholders, trust me. Class is likely to encompass roughly four years of gasoline sales to two-thirds of American consumers. Does he have any idea what he's talking about? Hurt? Nope. It's 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 pretty it's it's pretty crazy. Um you know, of course, you know. Let's see if we can get him they, on the they podcast. They claim the FTC's allegations of collusive behavior between Exxon and Pioneer didn't have anything to do with it. So I, I, I'm, I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked at the lack and the incompetence that some of these people show. And a lot of this stuff is just hand waving. It's just hand waving. Um, it's despicable, is what it is. I mean, just mm -hmm. flat out. Like Sheffield is gonna go call up OPEC and go, hey, uh, let's collude on some prices. You gotta be kidding me. Well, it, the problem is, it at the end of the day, a business is designed to make money. 
And if you have an issue with that, then you have an issue with capitalism. And your issue shouldn't be with oil and gas. It should be with the overall framework of the United States economy. You can go have that battle. I don't care. Go argue in front of the Supreme Court that capitalism is bad. And all. I don't care. We won't cover it on Energy News. But you're not going to, you know. But but when you cherry pick the oil and gas business, and why do you do this? Well, because there's a lot of money in it. So it 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 it, it just cracks me up. They want to have their cake. They want to have, they want to eat it too. They want it delivered to their house. They want it with a little extra frosting on top, and they want to be spoon fed. It's at some point you've got to do a little bit of work yourself. Uh, wh- what else, Stu? What do you got? Oh, I don't know. I'm all pretty worked up. Yeah. Let's- well, um, <laughs> well, we appreciate everybody sticking with us here. Um, Stu and I will be banging around Super Doug Wednesday, Thursday this week out in Fort Worth. So if you're there, come by, say hi. Um, otherwise, guys, we're going to let you get out of here, get back to work, start your Tuesday. Appreciate everybody checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank <laughs> you.